Hi, my name is Dr. Steve Beyer. I'm the clinic director of Beyer Chiropractic Center in Frankfurt, Illinois, and I put this video together for people who are suffering with the condition called peripheral neuropathy. I have a, a very effective treatment uh, plan for that. It's a comprehensive treatment approach for this condition. It gives more relief than any other treatment approach that, that's out there. Most of the treatment approaches are utilizing uh, one type of therapy device to try to treat the condition. Mine's a comprehensive approach. I'm gonna take about 15 minutes and describe what that approach is, 15 or 20 minutes, and um, you'll see by me going through this how it's different than, than anything you've probably been through, and it gives a lot of people relief. This treatment plan or um, approach that I have developed is, is really the, the, the brainchild or the result of, of years of studying and um, investment in time and, and quite frankly in money and different therapy devices that all collectively together uh, give people the relief from the burning and the tingling and, and the symptoms that they get with peripheral neuropathy in the feet and the hands. So uh, it's, a, it's a neurometabolic approach. We do treatments to activate and stimulate the nerves and get them functioning again, but it's important to um, identify and, and treat the underlying metabolic issues or the internal chemical uh, imbalances that almost always exist with people who have peripheral neuropathy. So it's a very comprehensive treatment approach and it's a neurometabolic approach. So I'm gonna take a little bit of time and go over that uh, at this time. First off, peripheral neuropathy is, is the, uh, the diagnosis given for when there is dysfunction of the nerves at the end of the body. That, that's what peripheral means. It means away from the center. Neuropathy means that there's something not working right with the nerve. So when someone has peripheral neuropathy, they have sick and diseased nerves at the end of the body. That's quite simply what's happening. Those small nerves at the, at the end of the body, away from the center, uh, in the hands and feet typically, are sick and diseased and, and aren't working quite right. Uh, the reason why it's important to um, identify uh, or investigate for metabolic issues with people who have uh, peripheral neuropathy is because the nervous system is the most highly metabolically active system that there is. Metabolism just means, quite simply, that you eat food and you, you get energy from it. That's what metabolism is. That's a real simple definition, is that you, you get energy from the food that you eat. Well, the nervous system, which is really only like two to three percent of your, of your overall body weight, accounts for 30 percent of the energy utilization, meaning it burns up 30 percent of the energy from the food that we eat. So when people have a problem metabolically, that means that they're not getting the energy from the food that they eat. And because the nervous system is the most highly metabolic, uh, metabolically active system within the body, it's the one that suffers the most when there are metabolic uh, problems. So a lot of people who have peripheral neuropathy, they have one type of metabolic issue or, or dysfunction or another. And it's, it's super critical to work with a doctor whose treatment plan includes uh, a metabolic approach. There are, are therapy devices that I'm gonna talk about that are very, very effective and, and quite frankly, I have some of the, the newest and, and most technologically advanced uh, treatment modalities available to awaken the nerves, but none of that really uh, will matter too much if you don't include a metabolic approach in the treatment of peripheral neuropathy. And that's because the nerves are the most actively metabolic tissue or system within the body. So um, the different causes of, of peripheral neuropathy, that there's, some, there's some common causes that, that, uh, that contribute to the condition. Very rarely is it any one thing, but um, some of the more common threads that, that people have in terms of, of uh, what's causing the condition is a lot of people who have peripheral neuropathy are on statin drugs. That's one common cause. Another common cause is problems within the lower part of the spine, problems where there's pressure on the nerves that pass between the bones of the lower part of the spine. That causes problems or contributes to peripheral neuropathy because those nerves that pass between the bones of the lower part of the spine run down your legs and into your feet. So degenerative problems, stenosis, degenerative disc problems of the low back, stenosis, things like that are oftentimes one of the contributing factors. Again, there, there's never any one cause. Uh, that's why a comprehensive approach is what's needed to get good success with the, the, uh, the treatment of peripheral neuropathy. Uh, so statin drugs, 
uh, problems of the low back, metabolic problems, including probably at the top of the list is diabetes, but there are other metabolic problems that contribute to the nerves at the end of the body being sick and diseased and, and not quite working right. Some people, another common underlying cause is, is chemotherapy. The drugs that are used in chemotherapy can damage some of the nerves. Uh, but even then, they can be awakened. Um, so what I, wanna go, what I wanna do is talk a little bit about each one of those, about the use of statin drugs, how they cause uh, or contribute to the, uh, to the condition of peripheral neuropathy, uh, the different type of, of back conditions and what can be done to treat them, the different type of metabolic conditions, including diabetes, that, and what we do to treat them. First off with the statin drugs, it, it's important to understand that um, the medical doctors themselves, if, if they read the journals, they would be aware, uh, the medical journals, they would be aware of that, the fact that statin drugs dramatically increase the, the risk of developing peripheral neuropathy. In fact, one medical journal called Neurology found out through a study that there's like a 16 time increased risk of, of developing peripheral neuropathy when you're on statin or cholesterol lowering medications. The reason why the, the statin medications can contribute to the onset of peripheral neuropathy is because those statin medications decrease the levels of an enzyme called uh, coenzyme Q10, which is needed to make energy within the cells. And again, the nerve cells are the most actively metabolic, metabolically active cells within the, within the, the body. So when you decrease the levels of that, that, that enzyme, coenzyme Q10, which the statin medications do, they do it significantly, then the cells just can't produce energy like, they, like, they are, uh, like, like is needed. And so the nerve cells are the most, um, the most affected by that diminished ability to be able to create energy within the cells. So statin medications uh, are almost always one of the underlying contributing uh, causes. Again, there's not any one cause, but statin medications, for the, for the reasons I explained, can contribute to the development of peripheral neuropathy. And it's important to understand that uh, a lot of people actually don't need the cholesterol-lowering medications. Um, they've artificially lowered the, the upper limit of cholesterol uh, down to 200. It used to be higher than that. Um, the cholesterol is actually needed in the body to make all the hormones. A lot of people can be doing without the statin medications. Some need to continue on the statin medications, and even then, we get relief, but most people are able to decrease the levels of, um, if not get, decrease the levels of their statin medication, if not completely get off of it. And it's also important to understand that cholesterol doesn't build up uh, and, uh, within the arteries and cause plaques unless there's inflammation within the arteries and throughout the body. The cholesterol is um, a repair mechanism that the body has. The cholesterol buildup within the arteries is a repair mechanism that the body has in response to inflammation. It's the underlying uh, causes of the inflammation that need to be addressed when people have elevated levels of cholesterol. And the underlying causes of inflammation are almost always there with people who have peripheral neuropathy. And, and we address that with our, our metabolic approach. So the statin medications, um, uh, that issue needs to be addressed with, with people who have peripheral neuropathy. The other thing that needs to be looked at is the low back. A lot of people have compressed, ish, compressed uh, nerves within their low back due to degenerative disc problems or stenosis or other low back conditions. That can be very effectively treated with a non-surgical decompression protocol. We have, within my office, non-surgical spinal decompression. This uh, slide shows a picture of, of one of the, the tables. We have three of them in the office that can very significantly decompress degenerative disc uh, problems within the spine, can help open up uh, the, the opening for the nerves in stenosis conditions. That's what stenosis is. when. There's a narrowing of the opening for the nerves within the, the spine. Non-surgical spinal decompression is very effective at treating those conditions. So when people come in for peripheral neuropathy, we, uh, of course, look at what medications they're on, see if they're on statins. We do an evaluation of the back to see if there's any contributing uh, problems or if there's any back issues such as stenosis or degenerative disc that's contributing to the peripheral neuropathy that they have. And if, if that's there, then we can effectively treat that with the non-surgical spinal decompression. Now, of the different metabolic conditions, 
that can contribute to peripheral neuropathy. Diabetes is, is probably at the top of the list, diabetes or, or uh, pre-diabetes, which is insulin resistance. With either one of those, the blood sugar levels are, are, are rising too high. The elevated level of sugar within the blood is very damaging to the nerves. We have had fantastic success with people with pre-diabetes, eliminating, uh, totally, totally eliminating the need uh, to go on medication. Even with people who have developed diabetes and, and they're on medications, we've had great success getting them off medication uh, quite often, and at the very least, reducing that medication by, with a functional medicine approach, addressing the underlying problems why the insulin isn't working very well. Insulin is the hormone that is needed to work well in order to lower the blood sugar levels. People who have diabetes or prediabetes have different underlying reasons why the insulin hormone is not working very well. And again, I've had patients who have had flat out diabetes. I'm talking blood sugar levels in the 300s, uh, glycosylated hemoglobin levels or A1C levels, which for those of you who have diabetes, that'll be familiar to you. Uh, in the 10 and 11 range, when it should be less than you know six or ideally less than about 5.7, 5.8. I've had people in the 10 and 11 range with their A1C levels get it under six and totally reverse their diabetes. So with a functional medicine approach, we address, we identify and address the actual underlying reasons why insulin isn't working very well, rather than just give the body more insulin or give a drug like metformin, which makes your body make more insulin. See, with diabetes and, and other blood sugar handling problems like prediabetes or insulin resistance, the body's becoming resistant to the insulin. It, the, it, it's not, insulin isn't working very well. And so to just give more insulin or to give a drug that makes the body make more insulin, in the short run will lower the blood sugar, but in the long run, the body just becomes more and more resistant to the insulin and, and more and more dependent on it. You have to take more and more of it and insulin, you know, medications or medications that make your body make more insulin will put on weight and have other negative effects. We can, with a natural approach, get the blood sugar under control. And then we also, what we do is, we do some comprehensive blood work to see what other metabolic issues are there because, quite frankly, almost everybody with peripheral neuropathy has a hodgepodge of other metabolic issues, uh, including things that cause a lot of inflammation within the body. And the nerves are very susceptible to that systemic inflammation. It doesn't matter what type of treatment that you're doing to stimulate uh, some better function within the nerves. It's not going to work or not going to work near as well if, if you don't address that inflammation. Not addressing the inflammation and trying to stimulate the nerves to work better with different therapies is kind of like uh, trying to build a house when, when the wood's on fire, okay? You're not gonna be able to, to build that house if it just keeps burning back down. You have to first put out the fire and then you can go about building your house. Same with peripheral neuropathy. You have to first address the issue or, or the causes of inflammation, get that under control, and then you can do therapies to start regenerating the nerves within the body. This actually uh, is one of the keys to the reason why we have such great success with peripheral neuropathy is I've had years and years of training in, in different aspects of functional medicine. So I'm able to know what blood tests to do, know how to evaluate them, so we can pinpoint and identify these metabolic issues that are present and, and are one of the contributing causes of, of the peripheral neuropathy. When we identify and address those issues, we're putting out the fire. And then we can do specific therapies that will help regenerate those nerves. And some of those therapies are, um, are, very, are very unique okay to my office we have some therapy modalities that can help stimulate and regenerate nerve function that, that quite frankly very few clinics in the Chicago land area have uh, I've committed myself to to uh, go through the training that's necessary to be able to identify these uh, underlying causes but also uh, making the investment in therapy modalities that are very very effective at stimulating and regenerating the nerve so the other half of the approach is uh, to my uh, comprehensive plan for peripheral neuropathy is the application of specific therapy modalities that are very, very effective in activating those sick and diseased and dying nerves. Again, that's what peripheral neuropathy is. The nerves at the end of the body are sick and diseased. They're not working well. And people just intuitively know this. They know that their nervous system's not working right, in addition to the symptoms that they have in their feet and or their hands. 
a lot of times there's, there's a forgetfulness, there's a brain fog. Their nervous system is sick and diseased and dying and not working very well. But we have therapies that can re, or, or stimulate some regeneration of those nerves at the periphery or the end of the body. So what do we do? We do treatments that cause some activation to those nerves. We get the fire out. We, we, I, we, we get the, the statin medication situation you know, reduced at the very least. We, um, we identify the underlying issues of, of inflammation and other metabolic issues that are causing irritation to the nerves with functional medicine approach. With some comprehensive lab work, we identify those issues and address them. And then we do therapies that activate the nerves and regenerate some healing. Now, probably chief among those therapy modalities is a device called horizontal therapy. Hakomed horizontal therapy is a very specific electrical stimulating device that quite honestly, um, there's only a couple of them in the Chicagoland area. I'm one of only two clinics in the Chicagoland area who has Hakomed horizontal therapy for the treatment of peripheral neuropathy. And it's very, very effective. It's different than any other type of electrical device out there. It's not anodyne, it's not any, it's not any other kind of electrical device. Uh, it, it's, the reason why it's different is, is that Hakomed horizontal therapy not only electrically stimulates the nerves and gets the activity going, but it metabolically stimulates those nerves and gets them working better. So it will, it will st stimulate the nerve electrically, blocking pain and improving, and improving blood flow, but it also stimulates the nerve biochemically. Okay? That's the difference with horizontal therapy. It does a dual approach. It stimulates the nerve biochemically, which allows for greater metabolism and healing within the cell. And it reduces inflammation locally within the cell. What's happening with horizontal therapy is that you're getting an alteration in, uh, in, uh, between currents of 4,400 hertz and 12,300 hertz with constant intensity that allows for deeper penetration into the body. No other electrical stimulating device is like that. This is very, very unique, very, very effective at activating those nerves. So there's a big difference. There's hundreds of different forms of electrical currents out there. Hakomet horizontal therapy is in a class of its own. It's totally different. And as far as the things that we do to stimulate nerve function, it's at the top of the list. Now, we do do other therapy devices, some of which a lot of other clinics don't even have. We also have class four low level laser therapy, sometimes known as cold laser therapy because it's a non heat producing laser treatment. We also utilize that in the treatment of peripheral neuropathy. Cold laser therapy is a very specific wavelength of light that has been proven to go into the nerve cells and stimulate energy production. Again, the nerves are the most highly metabolically active tissues within the body. Laser therapy has been clinically, scientifically proven to stimulate energy production. That's why they use it for the, also for the, the treatment of uh, the healing of wounds. People get wounds healed 10 times quicker when they have laser therapy applied to it because it stimulates energy production. Well, that's what's happening with your nerves when you have peripheral neuropathy. They're wounded, they're damaged. And if you can stimulate energy production within them, they'll heal more quickly. That's what laser therapy uh, does for us. So with, Mike, with uh, horizontal, Hakomet horizontal therapy and cold laser therapy, we really get a significant healing of those nerves, especially because at the same time, we're putting out the fire. We're addressing those metabolic issues that are causing inflammation within the nerves and damaging the nerves. <clears throat> this is just a little bit more about laser therapy. And, and again, with laser therapy, it's important to, uh, to point out it's not anodyne. Probably about 50% of the patients who come in to get treated for peripheral neuropathy have had anodyne therapy. And it's important for you all to understand, Hakomet horizontal therapy and laser therapy is not anodyne. These are much, much more effective, especially the horizontal therapy. We also utilize um, at home, part of our comprehensive plan is we include a unit to take home uh, to do treatments uh, on a daily basis while you're at home. It's called rebuilder therapy. Some of you may be familiar with that. Again, we have a comprehensive approach. We're having you on a daily basis at home doing some therapies such as rebuilder to stimulate and activate the nerves. 
Now, honestly, Rebuilder is not anywhere near in the class of horizontal therapy, but it's something that you can do at home on a very consistent basis to cause some stimulation or activation to those nerves. So the rest of the protocol or the program includes some nutritional therapies to uh, reduce some of the inflammation. So we identify with comprehensive blood work and lab work what's going on uh, metabolically and what's causing inflammation, and we uh, specifically address those issues. One thing that has been shown to be very effective for all peripheral neuropathy patients is a natural supplement called esterified fatty acid complex, which has been held, uh, shown to, to strongly reduce local inflammation. So we have patients use that as well as other specific nutritional therapies based on your labs. We, everybody's individual, we take a look at those labs, see exactly what you need, and then address those issues with very specific nutritional therapies. So the key points of my peripheral, my comprehensive peripheral neuropathy uh, program is that it takes many different things to correct it. There's not any one thing that we're doing, and that's really the, the secret to my success, is that it's very comprehensive. What we're doing is we're, we're addressing those underlying metabolic problems okay, with functional medicine. Many people, and if you've had blood work done and lab work, you know, some labs brought back to your MD, I'm guaranteeing you there's a lot of problems that have been missed. Unless you've been trained in functional medicine, you'll miss a lot of metabolic problems or, or internal chemical imbalances that are there. Unless you work with a doctor who's specifically trained in functional medicine, and knows what the functional or optimal ranges are, you're gonna have a lot of metabolic problems missed. So we identify those issues and we address them while at the same time doing very specific, very effective um, therapy modalities or therapy treatments such as horizontal therapy and laser therapy to heal the nerves, to activate and heal those sick and dying nerves. That's kind of the, the sum up of, of why this protocol is different. It's a neurometabolic approach. The metabolic is a huge part of it, but the specific things that we do neurologically, uh, such as horizontal therapy, are very unique and very, very effective. So uh, what I invite you to do is to um, give the office a call and schedule an appointment to come in and have an evaluation done. I do a very in-depth, uh, sensory evaluation to see exactly how damaged the nerves are in the feet and or the hands. It's called a Toronto evaluation. It blows my mind that 90% or 95% of people with peripheral neuropathy who've been to a medical doctor haven't had this done because it's the gold standard test to determine if you have peripheral neuropathy and if so, how bad it is. You should score a 74 on the Toronto evaluation. It, it's, a, it's a clinically proven way to evaluate for peripheral neuropathy. That's what we do. We do a Toronto evaluation in the initial exam. When you call to schedule an evaluation, uh, you'll come in, okay, within a week or so, and I'll do that Toronto evaluation, see what your score is. You should score 74, and we'll take it from there. I'll evaluate the back also. The Toronto evaluation is, uh, the back evaluation is not part of the Toronto evaluation but we also check out the back for reasons that I explained, and it, the exam cost will also include any x-rays that, that may be needed if it appears as though there's a back condition there. And then we do a follow-up visit to go over a treatment plan with you, go over a comprehensive treatment plan with you, and lay out what needs to be done to get you better. Patient after patient after patient, within three to four months, uh, that's typically the average treatment time, Ha, ha, get dramatic results and improvements with this comprehensive approach with peripheral neuropathy. So what I invite you to do is to give the office a call uh, if you haven't already scheduled an evaluation because sometimes people come into me and uh, they haven't been to a workshop or seen the DVD so you may have already uh, had the initial exam with me and, and are awaiting the second visit and, are, and that's why you're watching this DVD. If you haven't been into my office, give the office a call and schedule an evaluation to come in and see if you're a good candidate for this, this comprehensive uh, treatment plan, which is very, very effective.